We saw last week that a variety of forces are important in fluid mechanics. And we're going to recap and review those forces again because the ratios of those forces will help us define some dimensionless groups. We're going to look at this mnemonic VPIGS just about every time to think about the viscous, pressure, inertial, gravitational, and surface forces that are involved in a flow. If we take each of these individually, we'll understand the flow. And if we look at them in comparison to one another, we'll be able to tell which ones are important. If the viscous forces are small compared to the inertial forces, then we can probably get away with neglecting friction. If the gravitational forces are large compared to the inertial forces, then we'd better account for that gravitational effect. Likewise, surface tension. Gravitational forces. Well, F is equal to MA, just like always. The mass is going to depend on the density of the fluid and the volume of fluid involved. And that will depend on the length scale, whatever the dominant length scale is, cubed to make a volume. The acceleration that we're interested in in this case is the acceleration due to gravity. So the force of gravity will be equal to mass times acceleration, and that'll be proportional to rho L cubed times G. So the bigger something is, the more important gravity is going to be. The more dense it is, the more important gravity is going to be. We can look at surface tension forces as well. If we have a drop here with it cut in the middle, we've got a surface of a given length, and we've got a force acting this way due to surface tension. That surface force will be 2 times pi times the radius of the drop, that's the circumference around here, times the surface tension sigma. Or, if we just are interested in proportionality, it will be proportional to the surface tension and the length scale. What that tells us is that the surface force goes up with the length, but it doesn't go up with length nearly as strongly as gravitational forces did. Inertial force. That lets us look at how fast the fluid is moving. So if we start off with the idea that we're going to have a chunk of fluid, we can see it coming towards us, and we want to stop it before it hits us, then we'll have to have F equals MA. The mass will depend on how big and how dense the fluid is. The time depends on how far away it is and how fast it's moving. And the acceleration depends on how fast it was moving and the time it takes to stop. So the mass, once again, it'll be proportional to density and length cubed. The time that it takes to stop it will be proportional to the distance that we've got to stop it in and divided by the velocity that it was traveling at, how long it would take to get here. So that'll be our length scale divided by our velocity scale. The acceleration will be di u di t, which will be proportional to, well, we're stopping it completely, so the change in u is just u. And our time scale is L over u. So our acceleration is going to be proportional to the velocity squared divided by the length. Plugging all of that together, we'll wind up with a force that's proportional to the density, the velocity squared, and the length scale squared. So the bigger the thing is, the bigger the flow, the more inertial force is going to be involved. And the faster it's moving, the more inertial force is going to be involved. And of course, the heavier it is, the denser it is, the more inertial force is going to be involved. So we've got an idea of how big a force it takes to either accelerate the fluid up to the speed that we're interested in or bring it to a stop from the speed that it was going. Pressure force. Fairly straightforward, if we apply a pressure over an area, then the pressure force will be the integral of the pressure over the area, or if it's a uniform pressure, just the pressure times the area, and the area will be proportional to the length squared. So now we've got pressure forces, inertial forces, we've got gravitational forces and surface forces. What's left? Viscous forces. We need to know a little bit more about how viscosity affects the motion of fluids. So fluids will resist deformation. They'll deform, but it'll take some shear stress to do it. So if this plate is moving in this direction, and this plate here is fixed, then the fluid's going to deform a little bit over time. The stuff that's in contact with the top plate will move. 
The stuff that's in contact with the bottom plate will stay still and we'll wind up with a velocity distribution that looks like this. Velocity of zero down here at the plate and a velocity up here at the top plate corresponding to the motion of the plate. The shear stress everywhere along this velocity gradient depends on the gradient of the velocity, the slope of this velocity line with y, and the viscosity. So that shear stress is going to tell us what the viscous forces are typically. And that viscous force, we'll get it by integrating the shear stress over the area, just the same way that we got a pressure force by integrating the pressure over an area. We'll integrate the shear stress over an area. The shear is proportional to viscosity and the velocity gradient, that'll be viscosity, times the total difference in velocity divided by the length scale, at least from a proportionality standpoint. And the area is proportional to L squared. So if we follow that through, we'll wind up with the force due to viscous effects proportional to the viscosity, the velocity of travel, and the length scale. So the force will go up with all of those. So now we've got the viscous force. We've got all of our different forces calculated, and they all scale up with the size and the weight. Here we've got all of these forces. Viscous, pressure, inertial, gravitational, and surface tension. They all scale with the size. The bigger the system, the bigger the force is going to be. But they don't all scale to the same exponent. Some just to a single length scale, some to the length scale squared, some to the length scale cubed. Some of them scale up with velocity or with velocity squared. Others scale with things like surface tension, gravitation, density, pressure. So we expect all of these to change in different ways as we change the size of our flow, but we could look at the ratios of them to see which ones we expect to be important and when we expect them to be important.